Hello fellow programmers, my name is Pavel and I'm here with another C-sharp uh, exercise and this one is basically an introduction to an object-oriented programming in C-sharp. The assignment reads create a class representing a student. Include characteristics such as a student number, first and last name, overall GPA, classification and major. Write at least two constructors. Include properties for each of the data items and create a second class that instantiates the first class with information about yourself. In the second class, create a class method that displays your name and GPA. So basically we are going to create a class of student uh, with a bunch of information about the student. And um, yeah, that's about all. This is fairly simple. Like I said, it's an introduction to object-oriented programming. So let's start. So I'm gonna create a new class. I'm gonna add uh, down here class and I'll call it student. And in it, let's create a, a few uh, Let's create a constructor first. We, we need a few information about a student that will be passed into the constructor and instantiated. So let's do a public student and we need string for uh, first name and string for the last name And there's a bunch of other information you can add. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to add the GPA because we need the method that displays the GPA. So it's going to be GPA. But you can add as many properties and things about the student that you want to display as you, as you wish. I'm just going to go with this free to demonstrate the program. So um, that's our constructor. And we need to create a they want us to create two constructors, uh, right? At least two constructors. So this one has only first name, last name, and GPA. So let's create another one that will have a little more information. Student, let's say this one will have ID as well being passed into it. So it will be, you know what? I'm gonna just uh, copy paste this. This is gonna be the same, but this one will also have integer ID. So this one has uh, three items and this one has four, including the ID. All right, so um, these are two, two constructors. You can write, uh, again, if you have more um, properties for the student, you can create, a, uh, you know, just specific for one or two properties or one for all the properties. So this one, I'm going to have four properties, these four. And so this constructor will display all four of them uh, when, when invoked. This one will only have three of them without the ID. So uh, we'll, let's create the properties. Let's create the student ID. And it's a get and set. Now I'm going to create a little shortcut. When you type prop and Press tab twice, it creates the automatic property for you, and then you can just move f uh, within the, uh, you know, the type and the name or the, of the variable or the property. So this one will be first name. Let's do a string. That's gonna be last name, and we need the. And this one's going to be float because this one's going to be the GPA, GPA, get set. So now let's go back to our constructors and let's assign, let's set these uh, properties to have some values. So the first name property will equal to whatever we pass into the constructor as the first name. So that's our first name. Uh, Last name will obviously equal to whatever is being passed, which is the last name, which is a string as well. So the type matches. And our GPA, 
property equals the GPA that is being passed into the constructor. I'm going to copy paste these because they're going to be the same here, but I'm also going to add the ID. So uh, ID, uh, I mean student ID, the property equals the ID that is being passed oops, into the constructor. So this is uh, all that is needed for our student class. Like again, they wanted us to have two, uh, two constructors and a bunch of properties. So we have that. And the first constructor I created uh, instantiates an object with first name, last name, and GPA, but not with the ID. And the second one instantiates all the properties within the constructor. So now what they want us to do, have a second class then instantiates the uh, first class with information about yourself. And in the second class, we will have a method that uh, displays our name and GPA. So I'm going to uh, create another class. Uh, add class. And I'll call this one, um, well, this one can be called student details. So student details. And this one, we're supposed to instantiate the first class. So we do the instantiation. So it's student, and it's going to be called student. Or you can call it anything, just for the clarity that it doesn't have to be named student. It, you know, one is this is the class or the name of the object we are creating. This uh, from our student. This is a student class of student. Well, the student is a type in this case. It's going to be type of student. But uh, yeah, let me uh, let me just name, name it ST. Just to make sure that you don't get confused that why the student capital and one lowercase. This is just the name of the uh, uh, of the variable, so to speak. It's, it's a variable of type student. Uh, so we instantiate it with the new keyword, and let's instantiate the first. Uh, see, you can see now that we have two uh, overloaded constructors. The first one has the first name, last name, and GPA. The second one has the integer first name, last name, and GPA. So let's do the first one, uh, and the constructor will know based on uh, the type and number of. Uh, uh, parameters that you put into it, which one to, to use to instantiate the object. If you put three uh, matching parameters, string, string, and float, it will do the first one. If you put the integer first and then string, string, and float, it will instantiate the second one. So let's do the first one. So I'm going to do Powell and last name. I'll be the mysterious Mr. Smith. And and GPA obviously would be 4.0, but I don't want to brag, so let's make it 3.9, just for our programming purposes. All right, so that's our instantiated object, uh, and let's create the method uh, that displays the GPA and the first name. So it's going to be void because it's just going to display everything. So display output, I guess. And in this method, we can do uh, our typical console dot right line, uh, right line, and in it we will display our name. I, I'm gonna say Pavel Smith GPA uh, is 3.9. So I'm going to format it that way. So it's going to be my first name, space, second one is the last name, and the apostrophe S, so Powell Smith, GPA, GPA is, and this one is the second one, and it's a float. I'll format it with, you know, as F2 for float and um, for float with two decimal points. 
and it's gonna be so the first one is a student uh, means st dot first name then we have the st dot last name and finally we have the st dot gpa so this method does nothing else it is simply displays a sentence Pavel Smith GPA is 3.9 so now we can go to our program to our main and we need to somehow call this method now the first thing we need to do remember our student details is the class that actually instantiates the student object so you cannot go here and, and instantiate it again I mean it wouldn't make much sense what we have to do instead is instant instantiate the class student details and by default since the, the student will be instantiated within it so we can go and do our student details uh, I'll just call it SD student detail equals new student details and it doesn't take any parameters we don't have any constructor for that one and that's uh it's going to instantiate the the object student details and within it we will instantiate it the uh, student class as well so now we have an access to our display output and that should display the output that should display the Pavel Smith uh, GPA equals 3.9 so let's uh, let's run it and it indeed did Pavel Smith GPA is 3.9 and it's formatted right and everything so that would be that but let's let's try something else uh, as well let's instantiate an, uh, another student this one with the second constructor so student oops student st2 equals new student and this one will do the second constructor and it takes the integer first for the id so let's do i don't know 13 is the id of the student the first name would be peter the last name would be griffin and let's say his gpa is 0. I mean 1.0 and it's a float so now we have two students so now i can come over here i'm just gonna copy paste this and display the second student so it's gonna be instead of sd it's gonna be sd2 last name and sd but also let's do uh let's do we need to display the id we don't need to but let's do that as well so we do our student id or uh, just student uh, id is and it's gonna be a zero this time and uh, let's let's make it two sentences and then it says peter griffin's gpa so it's gonna be this one's gonna be two in front of it will be one that's gonna be for the first name so it will say student ID is 13, Peter Griffin's GPA is uh, 1.0. So when we run it now, oh, let, let's not forget the ID first, st2 dot uh, ID, student ID is the first placeholder. After that is the first name, last name and GPA. So when running now, we should have two students and we do we have Powell Smith GPA is 3.9 and student ID is 13 Peter Griffin's GPA is 1.0 so that's uh, our two students but what is the ID of our first student of Pavel now let's find out let's uh, simply output console console that right line and in it we will simply output something like student or powell's powell's id is 
and it's gonna be a placeholder for the student ID. So it's gonna be ST, that's the first student, student ID. So let's see what it says. And it says Pavos ID is zero. Now why is that? That's because our ID in our constructor was not instantiated. We, we have an access to it, but it's just by default because it's an integer, it's defaulted by zero. We can come over here, for example, and we can directly assign it. So st.studentID equals, and let's do 1000 and, or 101, whatever. So when I run it now, Now it says Powell's ID is 101. So the point is that even though we did not instantiate the ID within the constructor, we have access to all the properties, all the public properties right here. So we can assign values to them directly. We don't have to instantiate anything within our uh, constructor at all. In fact, we didn't do it uh, over here when we instantiated the student detail. We, not, we didn't do anything with the constructor, but we had access to all the stuff that was, or that is within the student details uh, class. So again, you don't have to uh, do it via constructor. You can do it by directly accessing the properties and assigning values to them through your program. So again, when we run it, it still says the same thing. and. Um, this is the exercise. I hope it was uh, helpful. If it was, please leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends and uh, students in your class, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.